Has anyone ever shown you a super simple way to be able to name all the notes on the fretboard? Or when you look at it, is it like looking at a black hole and just everything disappears? If so, we're gonna fix that today. And I'm also going to give you a free gift later on in this lesson that's gonna allow you to take this information and be able to play some epic solos with it. So stick around to the end of the video to see what that free gift is. My name's Charlie from Guitar Mastery Method, and I'm gonna show you the simplest, easiest, fastest way I've ever seen to be able to name every single note on the fretboard. Let's jump right in. First of all, we have a little bit of groundwork that we need to do first, and that is just to simply know the musical alphabet. It is super simple, it's just the letters A through G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, in between some of these letters, we have what we call sharps and flats. These are notes that have two different names, but they are the same note. On a piano, these sharps and flats are the black keys. So if we start on A, then the next note, the black key, is A sharp and B flat. The next note is B. We continue up, C. And then we have C sharp and D flat. Then D. Then D sharp and E flat. Then E. Then F. F sharp and G flat. Then G. Then G sharp and A flat. At that point, the next note would be A again. Now the musical alphabet goes forward and backwards over those exact same letters, which are the notes. There's only 12 of them, and they repeat at different octaves, which are just the same note at a higher or lower pitch. So there are sharps and flats between every single note, except for in two places, in between B and C, and E and F. And as long as you can remember that, you're good to go. Now the sharps mean up and the flats mean down. And so that's why on, for instance, A, if we go up, we have A sharp, one note higher than A. And if we were on B and went down, we have B flat, but that is still the same note. So for now, in this video, what are we gonna call these notes? Are we gonna call them sharps? Or are we gonna call them flats? So the rule of thumb we're gonna use here is if we're going up the notes, we're gonna use sharps. And if we're going down the notes, we're gonna use flats. So if you need to take some time to get that drilled into your mind, then watch over that little bit again, and then we're gonna jump straight into the fretboard. So to memorize the fretboard, all we really have to do is just memorize just one string using the musical alphabet. Now, of course, if you don't know the notes of the actual strings, we're gonna go over that super quickly. So we have E, A, D, G, B, E. Now, if you don't know them, super easy way to remember them is to go from the high E string, the thinnest string, and just use the acronym Easter Bunny Gets Drunk at Easter. E-B-G-D-A-E. -E. So before you go get drunk with the Easter Bunny, let's memorize these fretboard notes, okay? So you start out with the open string on the low E. That's E. Then the first finger here, F. And then the third finger here on the third fret, G. So just memorize E, F, G, E, F, G. And you wanna repeat that over and over again. E, F, G, E, F, G, E, F, G, E, F, G. Now pause the video if you need to, and once you have that memorized, E, F, G, then jump up to here with your first finger on the fifth fret of the low E string. Now this is A, and we're gonna be going A, B, C. A, B, C. So A with our first finger on the fifth fret, third finger here on the seventh fret, and then pinky here on the eighth fret, and that is A, B, C. Remember, we always have a sharp and flat between a note, unless it's between E and F and B and C. So E, F, and then we have to have this space here, which we'll get to in a moment, G. Then we have a bigger space again, we start on A, we have that space, A, B, C. So E, F, and B, C, there's no sharps and flats between. Okay, so A, B, C, you wanna pause the video, make sure you got that down as well. You wanna have E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, as soon as you have those two down, we only have one more note to remember, and that is D all on its lonesome, right up here on the 10th fret. D, right here. Very easy to remember. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now, what happens from there? What happens on the rest of the string? Well, it is simple. We just repeat the exact same notes. So if we grab the 12th fret, which is just an octave of 
this note here, that's an E, that's an E, so we can just do the exact same thing. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Really important that you got that down before we continue on. E, F, G, remember that. Then remember A, B, C, after you've got that, D on its lonesome. And just make sure you can repeat it higher up on the fretboard as well. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now from here, remember that we have these sharps and flats. So what are these notes that are in between there? Of course, the sharps and flats. They would be the black notes on a piano. So we have F here, E, F. What is the next note? One note higher than F is of course F sharp. If we were on G and we went down, we would call it G flat. Remember the rule of thumb for this video is if we're going up the notes, we're using sharps. And if we're going down the notes, we're using flats. So if we went up the entire fretboard, we've got E, F, G, A, B, C, D. But if we fill in the sharps and flats, we have E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, starting all over again. Now, once you got that down, we're almost there. We only have two tiny shapes we have to memorize, and then you can literally name any note anywhere on the fretboard. And to start out with, you actually already know a third of all of the notes on the fretboard at this point already. How? Well, because we have the low E string here and we have the high E string here. So what we actually have is E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And of course we have that up higher on the fretboard as well. E, F, G, A, B, C, D. So what about the other four strings that lie in between these two E strings, okay? Super easy. So the way that we can find the closest octave is by using an octave shape. And you've likely seen this before. So if we grab the A on the low E string here, remember A, B, C, we can jump straight to that A, grab that with your first finger, and then we're going to skip a string and skip a fret. And then, so we're gonna put our third finger down here on the seventh fret of the D string, and that is an octave shape. So if this is an A note, and we use this shape, this is an A note. So that means here, if I put this finger here, and I do an octave shape back to here, all I have to do to figure out what that note is, is know what that note is. And I know A, B, C, this note here is a C note. What about here? I just do the octave shape. This note here is a G note, E, F, G. Super easy. All we're doing is referencing the low E string to be able to name any of these notes. Now, one more example. What if I want to know what this note is? The eighth fret on the D string. Okay, we do the octave shape. Right here, we know this is in between A and B, one of these sharp and flat notes. So we have either A sharp or B flat. Up to us kind of what we're calling it right now. But that's how you'd find out what that note is right there. Now we have just one more octave shape to memorize and it's super easy because it is very similar to the previous one. Just put your pinky here on the eighth fret of the high E string and then your first finger here on the fifth fret of the G string. Now you'll see that this is the exact same shape that we did up here on the E and the D strings but this time we have an extra fret in between. And the reason for that is just because of the way the guitar is tuned. Now this here, this is another octave shape. And if you're ever wondering if you've got the octave shape correct, you can always test it out because you see how these notes sound pretty perfect together. Now, if I did it wrong and I was here, that ain't right. That ain't right. Now that is right. So you can always test to make sure you actually have the octave shape down perfect. So now to name any note on the G string, just grab onto that note and then do the octave shape and then reference this high E string. So to know what this note right here is, I just do the octave shape and I know A, B, C, A, B, C. This note right here is an A note because this note is an A note. If I grab this note right here, the ninth fret on the G string. I do an octave. This here is E because we have E, F, G, 
A, B, C, D, and again, it starts right here. It's that simple. One more example, let's do one of these sharp or flat notes. If I grab the sixth fret on the G string, just do that octave shape again. And I know that we have A, B, C. So this note right here is C sharp or D flat. You're making good progress. Right now, you can already name two thirds of the notes on the entire fretboard. So what about the remaining two strings? Well, let's start with the B string. If I grab this note here, I want to know what it is. Then I do the exact same octave shape as I was just using on the high E string and the G strings to find what this note is on the D string. And at that point, don't worry if you can't do this stretch, but I'm just going to use the octave shape from the D string to the low E string to be able to know instantly that this note here is a G note because we have E, F, G. The octave of that is obviously a G note. The octave of that is a G note as well. So if I grab the 10th fret on the B string, do the octave shape, which I'd normally do with my first finger, but I'm just for demonstration purposes, stretching it out so I can hold both octaves at once. And I just refer it back to the low E string. So you see how we have this exact same octave shape as we were using on the high E and the G strings. One more example for the B string. Grab the sixth fret with our pinky, and then we do that same octave shape to the D string. And then from the D string, we know how to figure out what note it is. We just go to the low E string and we have E, F. So this note here, sixth fret on the B string is an F note. Just one string left, okay? We're gonna use pretty much the same technique. So grab any note, let's say the fifth fret on the A string. Do the same octave shape that we did for the low E string to go to the G string. And then from there, we know how to figure out the notes on the G string. So we can refer to the high E string and we know we have E, F, G, A, B, C, D. This note right here is a D note. Another example, let's grab right here, okay? Second fret on the A string. We do the octave to the G string. Then from there, we do the octave we know from the G string to the high E, and then we know that this note right here is a B note. If we grab the fourth fret on the A string, right here, okay, octave to G, and then from there, we know that this is A, B, C, C sharp. So using these simple octave shapes, we can actually name every single note on the fretboard instantly. Now, of course, we can also use the musical alphabet to be able to name notes in different areas. For instance, this note here, second fret on the A string, we could easily just go A, A sharp, B, and use it that way. And also, we only need to learn, for instance, that the seventh fret on the A string is an E note so many times before you start to memorize it. Now, I shouldn't need to tell you just how powerful this can be for your guitar playing. Knowing what notes you're actually playing is a step forward in becoming a great guitar player. Now, we did cover the information in this video very quickly. So if you do need to watch it through a couple of times, then do that. But this is all the information you need to be able to name every single note on the fretboard instantly. And that leads me to the free gift that I have for you here today. Now, of course, this will show you how to instantly name any note on the fretboard, but what if you could instantly solo in any key on the guitar? I've created a free guitar cheat sheet which shows you how to instantly solo in any key. This means you can jam along with other musicians, play along to your favorite songs, be able to write your own guitar solos, or just jam out and have some fun improvising to some of the epic sounding guitar backing tracks you can find on YouTube. As I said, this is my free gift to you from myself and Guitar Mastery Method. So just click here to be able to claim that right now and I'll show you how to instantly solo in any key. Now, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed going through it as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And hey, go practice naming all those notes on the fretboard and I'll see you in another video soon.